Let's have a quick whole class discussion about this one so that we can get to number six, where we need to focus the end of our efforts today. So there's an important thing to remember. A solution to a system does what? Satisfies all constraints. Satisfies all constraints or all inequalities, right? And so we started to all get there a little bit, but I, I want to point this out. Uh, Layla, I haven't called on you yet today. If I'm looking at this boundary line right here on the right, which direction am I shading to get these solution regions? Up. I'm shading up. I said I have to shade up to get those solutions above that boundary line. Don't forget, coloring can help make it easier to see those different regions that we're looking at. Corella, are you taking notes or are you playing on your calculator? All right. So Desiree, when I look at this any or this boundary line on the left, which direction am I shading? Yeah. Up as well? Right? If I shade up, that gives me um, different regions here that are being shaded, okay? And then Kelsey. Yeah. In respect to this bottom boundary line, which direction would I have to shade? Down. Down. So what would we say? Could Amanda be correct? Why not? The bottom one doesn't satisfy the top one. What do you say? You mean the bottom one? No, I don't mean that. Okay. Well, what did you write down originally? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote down, um, uh, no, the thing, the some solution, none of them were to satisfy the part 30, the 30 parts. So, no, you said none of the solutions satisfy <laughs> how many of the inequalities? <laughs> All three of them? Desiree, what did you write out for this one? Oh, yeah, you don't, you, your voice is going. Sorry. Shelby, what did you write down? I said that there never, like each, in each of the shaded regions, there are only two of two lines. Wait. Okay. So, like in the top region, it's not satisfying the bottom line. Would shaded regions ever satisfy a line in the first place, though? Oh, well, it's not no. satisfying all of them. Satisfying all of what? <coughs> Say a lot. The set. Wait, the system. Oh, the inequalities, right? You said that once. We need to recognize this region would not satisfy all of the inequalities, right? You can't just say them, and it's not the lines, it's the inequalities that we want to satisfy. And so I want to ask you this. Looking at her shaded region, how many solutions, or what are the solutions? I mean, do these points make those inequalities true? Does that make any of the inequalities true? Which ones? Which inequalities? Does that mean, does that make all of the inequalities true? No, it makes none of them true. Yes, it does. Which one? There's none of them true. Oh, no, Why do you now say that it makes none of them? Oh, because none of them are shaded. None of them are shaded there, right? So we need to recognize, is there any region that is shaded for all three inequalities? No. It's shaded everywhere around the triangle thing. But is there any region that it satisfies no. all three inequalities? No. No? no. So then how many solutions are there? Two. One, zero, none. You just told me no points satisfy all three inequalities. Yes. So how many solutions are there? Oh, none. There's none. We need to recognize that Amanda's inequalities <coughs> have no solutions, right? Like, there is nothing that would make all of those inequalities true. So, uh, Amanda's inequalities, or her graph of inequalities, have no solutions. There is no region that makes all three inequalities true. So is Amanda correct about Frank's work? No, she's not really. Right. So she can't be correct about Frank. Even if Frank messed up, 
He wouldn't give these solutions. to recognize what would say here is that Amanda's inequalities just have no solution. That is a detail that everyone needs to write down. Amanda's has no solutions. Okay, that brings us to number six, which we were supposed to already have solved our system of inequalities because we wrote them together. If we're going to solve the system of inequalities, what are we doing? Come on, y'all. We're trying to solve the system. What do we need to do? Make the system. We already made the system last week. If you remember... Graph it and find all... And add that's what I wanted you to see. We have to graph if we're going to solve a system of inequalities. There is no other way around it. When it comes to systems of equations, there are other ways to approach it. But if we're going to solve a system of inequalities, we've got to graph. Okay, so when we looked at this situation last week, what were the constraints? Okay, so say one more time. Protein and fat, right? We had to have at least 8 grams of protein and no more than 6 grams of fat. Please do not forget, when we say constraints, what do we mean by that? When we say constraints, what do we mean by that? This is a detail that we need to write to ourselves if we aren't 100% sure how to word this. Constraints are just requirements that must be met. Constraints simply are requirements that must be met. We have to have at least 8 grams of protein and no more than 6 grams of fat per scoop. So what was, what was what was the inequality uh, for protein that we looked at? <coughs> what form of line did we just use to write that inequality? Standard, right? Why did woohoo that was almost a really bad time? Why did we use standard? Please pardon the interruption. At uh, 1 o'clock, Devin Brock needs to go to the library. Okay, sounds good. Oops. So why did we use this standard form here? What was the benefit of that? We're adding two things in the multiplication. We're not just adding two adding things. things below the multiplication. How, yeah, multiplication is what? Repeated. Repeated addition, right? AX plus BY. A times X means we're repeatedly adding. B times Y means we're repeatedly adding, right? Every scoop of Tabitha Tidbits had 4 grams of protein. We're repeatedly adding 4 grams of protein. Same thing with protein for Figaro Flakes. So when it came to fat, what was the inequality we wrote? Okay, so we have to pay attention to the fact that we want no more than and at least. But all that being said... What are the strategies that we need to take? We already said we need to graph this. What are the strategies that we could use to graph these two inequalities? Um, hey, it's not a system yet. You don't have the little... You're right. Thing. We need to make it a system. Thank yeah. you for reminding us of that. Yeah, you know, the, the I don't know. A little 
Curly frog. Curly brackets. That's what they're called. I'm going to call them curly brackets. Okay. So, but to solve this system, to graph it, what are the strategies that we can use to graph the system? I mean, uh, Say again. I could change it to slope intercept. There we go. Slope intercept form. We can convert to that or um, calculate x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So make sure you're writing this information down under number six. <coughs> All right. So converting to slope-intercept form, and I'm just going to do uh, protein with slope-intercept, fat with x with intercepts and y-intercepts. 4x plus 12y is greater than or equal to 8. What would I do to that to convert it to slope-intercept? Subtract 4x. What is 4x minus 4x? Zero and zero. So zero, right? Zero plus 12y is greater than or equal to. And do remember, we want that negative 4x first to be able to get that y equals mx plus b, that slope intercept form. Final step. Yeah, we just want to divide by 12. Remember, we want the y to stay there. So 12 divided by 12 is 1. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? You just subtracted on one side and you added on the other. Oh, I did it. What the heck? Subtracted by 4x, and that 4x is? Oh, negative. So the 8 yeah. was already positive, so we were adding 8. Yeah, because of uh, subtracting a positive same thing is adding a negative. Right. So it's just a negative 4x. Okay. Well, and I guess technically we do have one last thing we need to do. Divide by 12 and the y is uh, greater than or equal to whatever. Say that one more time. Negative 1. Okay. But what did you do to get negative 1 divided by 3? So do I just need to divide the negative 4 by 12? You also need to divide the 8. What is that called that you're doing right there? Distributing. Ah, uh, we have to distribute that division. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the same thing with multiplication. It really sucks. It's not, unfortunately. It's actually kind of nice. You get to stay consistent with that. Now, if I want an x-intercept, oh, though... Can you just leave it like that? Why not? With the 2 over 3? Well, 2 divided by 3. Yeah, your y-intercept is 2 thirds. Now, how are you going to get a 2 thirds y-intercept? How are you going to what? Graph that? We're we'll going to look at that in just a second. So, calculating x-intercepts and y-intercept, what would I do to calculate the x-intercept? Well, you saw it just like you did the other one. Mm. Oh, wait, for the x? If I want an x-intercept. Oh, no, it'd be different. You'd be solving for the x instead of the y, so it'd be... Yeah, but there's something you're missing at the very beginning. What do we always know, no matter what's happening with what we're trying to do, what x-intercept we're looking for? That's the word I'm trying to use. The y is what? Zero. zero. For an x-intercept, we know y is equal to zero. So 6x plus 4 times zero is less than or equal to 6, right? You all good with that? Sure about that? Is everything hunky dory right now? There's a glaring mistake. 6x plus 4 is less than. Say that one more time. It needs to be equal to 6. Bro, why does it need to be equal to 6 right here? Okay, well, let's think about it. Where is an x-intercept located? Like, let's just say I have a random inequality here. But where is the x-intercept located? On the x-axis where we're shading or what? On, where we're shading or what? On the line. On the line. Hey, 
Boundary lines are equations. We cannot forget that a boundary line is an equation. So 6x is equal to 6. So 6 is equal to 1. Is that, so what is my x-intercept? Nope. Uh, zero, zero, one. Zero. Uh, one comma zero. Thank one. you. The x is one, the y is zero. Now, Desiree, I will say, this is a big reason with these fractions. This is a big reason why I would do x and y intercepts a lot of times. Um, if I'm looking for a y intercept, in this case, right, x is going to equal zero, so six uh, times zero plus four y is equal to six. 4y is equal to 6, y is equal to 3 divided by 2, or 1.5. And so it is much easier to just have two points than it is to do other things. And how are you going to graph that y-intercept? Well, if I'm going to um, go by 1s, it would be really hard. But notice how I have some halves over here. Notice how I have some thirds up here? Since I'm trying to deal with thirds and one halves at the same time, I'm going to scale by sixth. I leave it somewhere. Learning to scale is an important skill. Notice one six, two six, hey, that's just one third. Three six, hey, that's just one half. Four six, that's two thirds. Five six, and one, right? It's important to learn how to scale and account for those things. So you're right, like how am I going to do thirds and halves? That's going to make my life hard. And you don't need to do this next part, but I do want you to have this work down. When you look at the graph that I use and you look at the solutions on Schoology, I went by six. One six, one third, which is two six. One half, which is three six, so on and so forth. Now, when I look at the fat, there's an x-intercept of 1, 0, and a y-intercept of 0, 3 halves. That's all I need. Got two points. And I'm going to draw a boundary line through them. Okay? Now, you don't have to graph this right now. I would recommend it. I'll even leave this up here so you can in a second. But there's two major things I want you to hear, because I already saw these as mistakes on the understanding check. Equations when we're looking for intercepts. Only do equations with the intercepts. Now, when we have it in standard form, can you just look at the inequality to know which direction to shape? Yes. No, not in standard form. This time you can, but there is a specific time, we'll talk more about it moving forward, when it will mess you up if you look just at the inequality. Do not forget, you shade the half plane of solutions, meaning the things that make the inequality true. So you need to test a point. It takes an extra two seconds. This is the fat inequality. Zero plus zero, is that less than or equal to six? Yes. So am I supposed to shade down? Yes. Yes. We're almost done. Just hold on one second for me. The next thing is, when you look at the protein one, it's a y-intercept to two-thirds. I cannot tell you how many students I saw just go down one square and to the right three squares. But that is a negative one divided by three. Did I just go down one whole unit? No. You went down a fraction of one. I went from four six to three six. I went down a six. I didn't go down a whole one. You need to be careful about your scaling. That messed some of you up, not a ton, but you lost some small points due to that. What I will say is, depending on the situation, you could just do negative one-third divided by one, and then here's my rise, and here's my run. So I go from two-thirds down a third to one-third, and to the right one. Here is one. Down another third to the right two. Now, this one's in slope intercept, so I can just look at the inequality and know that I'm shading up. So, where would my solutions to this system be? Under, under the pink one and above the black one. 
So all of this? Think so? Because I would have only said this. Okay. Not just okay. Does anyone have an idea why? That region is shaded by both inequalities, isn't it? You cannot have negative scoops. Remember how we've talked about having implied constraints. Well, what if you get a scoop and then it falls to the cup and meets here? No. <laughs> the number of scoops has to be greater than or equal to zero. Where's this graph at? I don't have it on my paper. We're supposed to create it. I asked you to do it over the break or over the weekend. Hmm. Oh. oh. That one. Yeah. That yeah. One. yeah. I don't remember these things. Okay, so your homework, which will be for an accuracy check. <laughs> Yay! Kelsey, I could give you more of them if you want. I could add number seven from the task on there. Kelsey, shut up. So numbers 13 through 15, and then the go number 21. Please note on number 21, I am changing the inequality. It was 5x plus 3y is less than or equal to 21. I am making it 5x minus 3y is less than or equal to 21. Mine says 15 on there. Number 21? Oh, 15? Well, what did I put here? Well, I'm making it 21. Yep. Your face is what? I'll tell you, I'll tell you again. Devin, yeah, you, you can go ahead and head down to the library. Remember when they were asking for you earlier? Um, so 5x minus 3y is less than equal to 21. I did mean to do 15, but I've already told everyone else to do 21, so. The face is beautiful. I Yes. Corral, I hear you mumbling things, but I haven't seen anything yet. Huh? When do we got? I didn't think. You need my understanding chip. You can look at it right now, but I have people who haven't taken it yet, so I'm not passing back yet. I'll look at it. 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 I'll look at where do you want me to pull that out of? Just yes. be aware, you cannot take this back. You have to take that right away. Oh, why don't you drop my stuff now? Mine. 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 Whatever, whenever I get it all right, it just can't stop. How dare you give me a 5.75? 2.5? You can look at your scaling. What? Well, well, I, I had better justification than she did. You may have written more, doesn't mean you had better justification. Wait, I got four. Remember how I was talking about that scaling just a second ago? Thank you. Yeah, just halves instead of ones. Yeah. Yeah. You have a way better That was an issue that a lot of, if that was the only mistake students made, I only took off the board. Yeah. What was number one? What are you, sir? You didn't do anything. Oh, look, four, four. He put an answer for number one. Four. And they came in negative one. Four. What do you mean I gave you a negative one? But I was a one. He put D. How do you get this one? It's it a No, you put E. They don't have any differences. You do that one. I mean, I got a question. If I would have picked A, would you have been mad? Yes. Especially because I've explicitly told you. What's the difference? What did I do? What? Stop that. I don't get negative one on the back. Did you see that? Wait, 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 wait. I did. Why don't you have B? Yeah. I don't want to figure out the correct inequality symbol. I already know inequality symbol. The B, where's that is? Are they in I now? Yes. So what's the grade here? A four, a four, a four, a four, negative one and negative and a positive one. I don't know. What's how you get? Uh, six. I did not have a grade. You only need an average.
average of 5.5 to get 100. So what's that? What's a 4, a 4, a 4, and negative 1 and a positive 1? Like, what's the average? Yeah. I'd yeah. have to look at my computer. If you want to go grab my computer, I can let you know. Oh, no, I'm good. That's right. Just give me a little chance. I'll leave you go. I'm going to stop being a, a school bully, Miss Ken. I don't think anyone's scared of you. Yeah, you have to be intimidating. So. No. Too, this, this laptop's too nice to break, bro. Man, it might drop this. Terrell, let me, let, me, um, let me give you a little bit of advice. Don't be a bully or you're going to get bullied because you're not intimidating. I never got bullied in my life. You're like trying to bully me one day. Fix that. Like trying to bully me. Yeah. Wait. What? You said you said I have to fix that. Correll, look, man. Um, number one, you might want to get. Oh, tall. Layla, can you pause or Mr. Lip? Number can you pause two, the video. I totally forgot to pause. You're gonna have to get bigger. Oh, this is a conversation. I want to choke you.